No, well, look, we're just we've we've been in Sapporo uh, meeting and greeting a lot of people who who love rugby. Basically, it's a fantastic experience, uh, and, and and all of them know about the Australian Wallabies. Uh, not so many know of them know about us, but uh, us being the classic Wallaby element. But it's been a, a very enjoyable trip, and certainly uh, Sapporo is a fantastic place, and we're looking forward to seeing as many Australian supporters on the ground as as we can next year for the World Cup. Well, I can tell you, I run the, run the, t the defence tackle drill and, and one thing they do know how to do is tackle uh, quite hard. But, uh, you know, there's obviously been a, a, an emphasis on trying to get children and, and create a bit of a legacy within the rugby union in that space. There's, of, of course, um, some, some interesting sites and, and a real emphasis on tourism as well, getting across here with our very close relations with Japan and Australia in terms of trade routes. But importantly, there's been a lot of talk about creating a legacy and making sure that we don't just catch for a flashpoint. There's, there are children, uh, boys and girls and parents, encouraging their children to participate in rugby and to continue on the work that will obviously be, be laid during the World Cup next year. Yeah, kids are pretty resilient, but it was good to take their mind off it, see them smiling and running around having fun. Wally came for a visit. He was probably Wally was more popular than, than than we were running the clinic. So just good to see the kids running around, getting out in the in the fresh air and, and having some fun. It's a very tangible dream too with the World Cup. Just well, under a year away now, just under a year away. Exciting times here in Sapporo and everywhere in Japan. And they're quality footballers coming through, good rugby players at the top level, and they're the present and future of our game, especially everywhere in Asia and Japan.